Alright, so this video is kinda late, and that's because I've been distracted by, uh, working on my other channel, so if you're at all interested, you could check it out. If just to yell at me for not working on this one. Alright, the q and I've been meaning to do this one for a while. The people of Treetop Whispers have spoken, so I will speak in return. Ugh, that was lame. Anyway, first question. Do you believe in the paranormal? You bet your ass I do. The amount of insane shit that's happened to me in life cannot be explained by normal means. Especially when it comes to technology. I can't go anywhere near it without it spontaneously imploding. You want to know more? Because I'll tell you. Great Peaches cookie crumbs do I hate my ducking iPod. One day I was listening to This Is War by 30 Seconds to Mars. Because it reminds me of Infinity War and the lyrics give me a strange sense of hope. And what in the Lord's good name does my iPod decide to play next out of 563 possible choices? There are moments that the words don't reach. There is suffering too terrible to name. You hold your child as tight as you can and push away the unimaginable. The you son of a diarrhea lollipop! Way to twist the knife, asshole! You can't even let me enjoy a fleeting sense that things may still turn out without reminding me of how it went horribly wrong in the first place? There's no freaking way this was just a coincidence. Everyone else got a guardian angel. Meanwhile, I'm sitting over here with a godforsaken Loki devil fucking up my life! You know, some people see belief in the supernatural as naive or backwards, but I say it makes life a lot more interesting. Second question. How did you come up with your name? Oh, I was planning on addressing this one sooner or later because, as it turns out, Quiet Rage is also the name of a documentary following the events of the Stanford Prison Experiment. Oh, that's awkward. In no way am I associated with this film or anything to do with this experiment. It all happened before I was born. At the very least, it provided us the opportunity to learn about it. And on another note, it also happens to turn out Quiet Rage is also the name of a super move used by Gohan in Dragon Ball Z. Aw, come on! Why couldn't it have been someone cool? Gohan sucks. All kidding aside, I had a lot of trouble coming up with my name. As with anything, it's tough trying to come up with a fitting name for any character. Especially when you need that name to be marketable. I didn't want to use just a regular warrior's name, as that probably wouldn't stand out enough. But I also wanted my name to be true to the series, too. So I decided to make my name in the early settlers design and have it reflect who I am as a person. This may be surprising to you, but I'm soft-spoken and easygoing in real life. I don't talk that much, and it takes a lot to piss me off. But if you happen to hit a soft spot or say the wrong thing, oh man, you will be in for a surprise. So after much deliberation, I came up with the name Quiet Rage for my usually silent matter, but explosive personality and sharp tongue. I'll admit, the name made a lot more sense back when I had bad equipment and my audio was terribly not low. But hey, a name's a name, and I'm not going to change it now. Next question. How old are you? I am 22 years of age. Yes, I know, I'm a dinosaur in this fandom. When I was growing up, my mom would tell me all the time that I would eventually grow out of warriors. And my dad tried telling me to move on to proper young lady interests. Well, guess what, guys? It wasn't just a phase after all, chumps. Fourth question. How did you come up with your OC? My OC is actually heavily based on my old RP character from Warriors Topic, Sky Eye. The basic appearance is the same, and I added a few characteristics to make her unique. One, the crescent moon marking. And two, the tall white socks in honor of my first cat, Mary Sparkles. Fifth question. What is your favorite love triangle in Warriors? I don't actually care for love triangles that much, 
but I don't have anything against the trope itself. It, I just hate the infighting they usually cause within the fandom. After all, it's easy to dismiss ship wars as frivolous wastes of time when most of your favorite ships are non-canon rarities that are barely supported by others. Here, let me show you an example. Hey, quiet! What team are you on? Gale or Pita? Are you serious? Obviously, Cinna is Katniss's true love. Huh? That's ridiculous. Just what do you smoke? No, it's fine. Let's change the subject. Okay, quiet. How about... Jacob or Edward? What? You actually read that garbage? Needless to say, I was not popular in school. Next question. If you could add a character to Warriors, what would it be? Ah, I believe I mentioned it before, but now's a good time to go over it in more detail. I would add a rogue character that eventually joins ThunderClan and falls in love with Dovewing. He would be pessimistic and cunning, with a dark sense of humor, but tends to be a bit self-absorbed and can get caught up in his busy schedule. Just pity party after pity party. For general purposes, think of a blend between Deadpool, Kylo Ren, and Greywing. In this universe, he was originally a kitty pet, but his owner was abusive. But since he didn't know how to hunt or fend for himself, he stayed. One day, Darktail stumbled upon his yard and offered to let him join his kin, to teach him how to care for himself. He agreed, and became fiercely loyal to Darktail. When Darktail found SkyClan and chased them out, he became disillusioned with his leader, and left. He finds the lake territories and is curious about the clan structure, so he observes from the shadows for a long time. Thanks to his experience, he's able to evade detection for a while, but gets caught by Dovewing while she's out hunting one day. She brings him back to ThunderClan, and he overhears some cats talking about the attacks from the rogues. He knows who it is, and makes a deal with Bramblestar. He'll tell them everything he knows about Darktail and his tactics. So once he's defeated, he'll be free to go, forgiven for trespassing and stealing their prey. The fight to drive out the rogues escalates into full-on war, and goes on for many moons. The other ThunderClan cats are suspicious of him at first, but their hostility grows with each defeat, some becoming convinced that he's a double agent for Darktail. The rogue is hopelessly lost. All his life, he's never belonged anywhere. His trust has always been misplaced. It becomes clear to him that he can only trust himself. He lashes out at others and begins to withdraw from himself. But Dovewing has seen a glimpse of who he really is and refuses to give up on him. Slowly, she wears down his defenses, and he comes to realize that his place is with her. When the clans finally manage to take down Darktail, the rogue requests to join ThunderClan permanently, and he finally lives with an open heart. Yeah, I may have thought about this a bit. Seventh question. What do you think about Dawn of the Clans? Easily some of the best material the series has to offer. If you haven't read Dawn of the Clans, boy, you are missing out. What are you waiting for? Go read it! It's everything that makes Warriors great cranked up to 11. Unpredictable suspense, a diverse, lovable cast who can die at any time, twists and turns, drama, tough moral dilemmas. I can't praise it enough. And I definitely need to get around to talking about it more in the future. Next question. Do you like any of the other series the Hunters have made? Yes, the first arc of Seekers was a great read, which is a shame since it's so overlooked. If Warriors and Wings of Fire had a love child, it would be Seekers. It's a group of best friends, some with magical powers, with estranged or dead parents, trying to find their place in the world while trying to save it at the same time. Essentially, it's a coming-of-age story rolled in a save-the-environment tortilla, with bears sprinkled on top. What's not to love? I even have two bear plushies that I named after some of the characters, Kaliak and Lusa. I remember when the series first came out, people were pissed at the inclusion of magic. It wasn't true to the hunter formula, they complained. Well, that's all bullcrap. Despite the similar cover designs, this series is all its own, so why does it have to abide by another universe's rules? I won't spoil it, but the Aarons absolutely nailed the main character's power. 
They really use it to its full potential and write a lot of powerful moments made possible by this new stem of creativity. Some parts of this series have struck my heart just as deeply as Warriors. It's a story I'll never forget. But aside from that, I haven't touched anything else they've done. The second arc of Seekers felt unnecessary when the first ended on such a final note. And Survivors was obviously just a carbon copy of the Warriors formula, with dogs instead of cats to tap in on the dog people market. I read the excerpt online, and wow, it's so bad. It was painfully obvious that the original Aaron's had nothing to do with it. The voice felt so unnatural and contrived a comparison. You could just tell that no effort went into any of it. Every fantasy term was phoned in. You know, in Warriors, they have kitty pets. In Survivors, they have leash dogs. In Warriors, there's rogues. In Survivors, there's fierce dogs. Loners, lone dogs. Two-leg place, dog garden. Fathers, sire dogs. Queens, sow dog. Okay, we get it, they're dogs. Shut up and for once in your life, put effort into your work. Okay, last question. Who are your biggest inspirations? Wait, are we talking inspiration for my YouTube work or general life inspiration? Because I have two major inspirations for both. For YouTube, I was largely inspired by Angry Joe and Critical. Guys, if you think I'm foul-mouthed, let me tell you, I am nothing compared to these guys. First, Angry Joe is just as the name implies, angry. But he doesn't let anything hold him back from sharing his honest opinion. The world of gaming journalism is corrupted with sponsorships, incompetence, and bribery. And he's one of the few people that I trust to be completely honest and review a game as it deserves. Although he has made plenty of mistakes in the past, I still hold faith that he does have good interests at heart. And I have always aspired to not hold back on my thoughts or opinions, just like him. Second, for Critical, let's just say he has a colorful vocabulary. When I inevitably started getting complaints about my swearing, I decided to oblige these complaints by getting more creative with my insults. Naturally, I er, researched some of my favorite Critical videos for inspiration, with extremely successful results. You probably noticed a few of these results throughout my videos, and I have gotten quite good at it since then. Here are just a few off the top of my head. Don't pull that shit-stained wool over my eyes, you greasy turkey. I've been playing this game a hell lot longer than you. You traitorous sweat monkey. You couldn't attract flies if you coated yourself in manure and crap strawberry pulp. Bitch. You're such a boring person, I bet you'd rather be butt buddies with a piece of cardboard covered in hot glue, you creep. Let me say, it's a useful skill to have, so thanks, Critical, for inspiring me to expand my vocabulary. As for life inspiration, I bet you already know the first one. As you can imagine, a kid with Asperger's doesn't do well in most si social situations. So I often had to learn about humanity and life through the scope of fiction. And it was through that lens that Vicky Holmes created did I truly begin to understand the world. It was still batshit insane, but at least I had this pocket reality where the rules actually made sense, where I felt I could really belong. Inside this reality, there were many characters that reflected a piece of me. Their journeys taught me how to prepare for my own. But there was only one character that I identified with on every level. One in a long-running series that seemed to develop parallel to me, changing in the same ways I did over the years. That character was Church from Red vs. Blue. That show was created by Bernie Burns. I owe everything to him. Where do I start? Well, I already mentioned that my one true passion is writing. It was and always has been my greatest skill. The one thing I do that makes me feel centered in the world. I've been writing since I was five years old, long before the influences of fiction found me. It wasn't long before they did, though. I was nine when I saw Red vs. Blue for the first time, and although I was too young to appreciate a good chunk of it, I still adored the series. 
Even as I grew up and stopped watching it, they lingered in my mind, vivid as ever. When I eventually returned to the series after high school, the Chorus trilogy was released, and my favorite ended with it. It was a brutal ending. Not only does he die, but you don't even know if it worked or not. I was crushed. I fell into his numb stupor for three weeks. I felt like one of the chambers in my heart collapsed on itself. It doesn't help that this event happened to coincide with a tough time in my life, when I was forced to confront my plans for the future in crippling fear. One day, I was so overwhelmed with the stress, I thought of Alpha and how he once purged certain memories from himself because they are too painful to hold on to, and I was inspired. I wrote a poem, and upon marking the last word, all of the despair had melted away. Another bolt of inspiration struck. I decided to write my own ending to the Chorus trilogy, to deal with the lack of closure, where the cast copes with Church's death and throws a ridiculous funeral. For the first time in weeks, I felt I had purpose. When it was done, I was proud of what I came up with and posted it online. and didn't get that much attention. But a few days after I posted it, a comment appeared. The reader really liked it, and I was overwhelmed with joy. I managed to touch someone's heart with my writing. It helped me reaffirm to myself that I am good enough for this field. Writing this short story was the most fulfilling challenge of my life so far. Completing it reminded me of who I really am, who I'm meant to be. I realized what really matters in life, to stay true to yourself. Hunt for your purpose and never let go. I don't know if I would have reached this epiphany without this series, without church. So thank you, Bernie Burns. You saved me. You are my inspiration.